Hey, what's up everybody? Chad Kalick here and welcome back to episode number 85 of the In a Crowded Room podcast where this time we are going to talk about the recent bizarre diatribe of one of my favorite actors on planet Earth, Terrence Howard, who when at the Emmys, when asked about Empire, the show in which he plays Lucius, um, it was the final season of Empire in which he announced he was going to retire. Uh, he was asked what he was going to do now that he's retired, in which this is the response that he gave. You made huge headlines when you said, after you complete these 15 episodes of Empire, you got to walk away for a while or forever? For good. I'm, I'm, I mean, everyone keeps trying to tell me, don't say it's forever. But I've spent 37 years pretending to be people so that people can pretend to watch and enjoy what I'm doing when I've made some discoveries in my own personal life with the science that, you know, Pythagoras was searching for. I was able to open up the flower of life properly and find the real wave conjugations that we've been looking for for 10,000 years. Why would I continue, you know, walking on water for tips? when I've got an entire generation to teach a whole new world. To t that, that's a big remark. Yeah. What, what, what do you intend to, to do? Well, let me put it this way. All energy in the universe is expressed in motion. All motion is expressed in waves. All waves are curved. So where does the straight lines come from to make the platonic solids? There are no straight lines. So when I took the flower of life and opened it properly, I found a whole new wave conjugations that expose the in-between spaces. That's, it's the thing that holds us all together. Wow. <laughs> but wait, going on. Uh, you thought that was it. It isn't. There's more. No. I'm sharing that. On, on Tuesday, when I receive my star, I'm going to be able to prove that gravity is only an effect and not a force. I'm putting something on YouTube really? where I will build the planet Saturn without gravity and build the Milky Way galaxy wow. without gravity. Did you also Tuesday. say you're getting your star on Tuesday? Yeah. On the Walk of Fame. On the Walk of Fame, well, which is interesting. How am I getting a star when I've never, for a TV when I've never received an Emmy nomination for TV? You're a presenter tonight. You can do whatever you want when you stand in front of that microphone. What are you going to do? I have no idea. I'm just, I'm just being honest and looking at it. You know, I would think an Emmy nomination would come first. Okay, well, this is obviously a very interesting response, but it's not something new. I've actually heard this response before, something very similar from none other then Jim Carrey, who again on a red carpet event, uh, said this. Wait, tell me, is it true you're wandering the streets? You need a date to the party? What's up? No, no, no. I'm, I'm, I'm doing just fine. Uh, I just, uh, you know, there's no meaning to any of this. So I, uh, I wanted to find the most meaningless thing that I could come to and join. And, uh, and, uh, and here I am. They're I mean, you got to admit, it's completely meaningless. Well, they say they're celebrating icons inside. Celebrating Do you icons. In icons, boy, that is just the absolute lowest aiming, you know, possibility that we could come up with. It's like icons. What do you do? You believe in icons? I don't I believe in personalities. I don't believe that you exist. But there is a, a wonderful fragrance in the air. You don't believe certain icons have the power to make change, to think differently, to be bold, to inspire others? Artistry, you're one of them. On the good foot. Ha! Yeah. You shut it down now. Yeah, no, I, uh, I, I don't believe in icons. Uh, I don't believe in personalities. I believe that peace lies beyond personality, beyond invention and disguise, beyond the red S that you wear on your chest that makes bullets bounce off. I believe that it's deeper than that. I believe we're a field of energy dancing for itself. And, uh... I don't care. But Jim, you got really I, dressed up for the occasion. You look good. No, I Was didn't. Was that an get accident? Up. I didn't get dressed Who up. Who did? There, there is no me. There's no you. No. We're not here. This is a dream. There's just things happening. And there are clusters of tetrahedrons moving around together. Okay. Yeah. So what's happening in our world right now? Because there is a lot of news that actually is relevant that's not that yeah. Here's uplifting. the thing it's not our world. None that's of this is key. real? Nope. nope. So you're just passing We don't through. matter. We don't matter. Oh, wow. There's the good news. Okay. So what is going on here? 
what is happening with these actors who get to you know a major level of success in their career uh, as Terrence Howard points out 37 years in the game uh, he's been acting and uh, as he pointed out pretending what do you say something like I'm pretending to be other people pretending so I could dance for tips or something like that and they get to a place where they have this kind of disconnect where they start seeing the world as you know um math and geometry and and just science and that you know uh, we're nothing that we're all just atoms and molecules and uh, you know while i think that is true and there's something to be said to that i always have to wonder you know is is there a genius that these guys are tapping into or is this just the madness that ensues when you reach a level of wealth uh, and fame and opportunity? Once you've done everything in your life on your bucket list and once you've obtained every possession you could possibly obtain and if you've experienced the love and if you've had children and all of those things that people strive to have, uh, comfort, security, um, you know, your children's future secured, uh, you know, all the gadgets and toys, like once you have all of that, and that is seemingly what happens with these actors, they get to a certain area of their career, like Jim Carrey, when you're just, you know, massively huge and powerful and wealthy, you know, what is happening with these guys where this type of dialogue starts occurring now a lot of people think this is directly related to the resurgence of dmt and the old uh, terence mckenna studies of everything from uh, mushrooms uh you know dmt ayahuasca that a lot of these you know really wealthy powerful people have a lot of free time on their hands and that they are getting into uh, the drug world, specifically hallucinogenics and specifically DMT, it, it seems to be something that this type of specific language of geometry and circles, where are the straight lines and, and like, you know, Jim Carrey talking about how we're just nothing but matter and the, uh, the blackness that holds us together. That's where the answers are. And like all this stuff, is it, is that what's going on? Is this like the resurgence of DMT through, uh, you know, the popularity of it through Joe Rogan pushing it literally now almost every single fucking podcast that I listen to? There's a, a, a Joe Rogan podcast. If you listen to Joe Rogan, you can rest assured that two things are going to happen. He's going to flip flop on his UFO stance every other week, depending upon the guest that he has. And he's going to talk about DMT and how awesome it is. And you know, what's really weird is. In Hollywood, um, again, I'm not a supporter of Alex Jones in any fashion, in any fashion. While I think Alex Jones has gotten many things right, I think he is so far off the wagon on so many things that I just don't know how anybody could ultimately support his approach to uh, solving any of these conspiracies that he brings up. But he mentioned on The Rogan Show, and it's a very, very real thing that I hear about, and I have heard about for the last 15 years in Hollywood, that there are these big DMT parties where, you know, the upper elite, you know, get together and they uh, have this uh, spirit cooking, which is this heavily... Um, you know, saint, satanic induced ritual of drinking animal blood and it's just really weird shit. And they take this DMT and they speak to these, they're called mechanical elves. And supposedly these mechanical elves have the uh, answers to the universe and they, you know, guide these individuals and what they're supposed to do with their lives and they tell them how to control and take over humanity. And this shit sounds completely crazy, right? It, I mean, listen, there's no way around the fact that the idea that the most successful people in Hollywood 
I'm getting together to take DMT to talk to mechanical elves to learn how to control the universe and the world and to take over humanity. I mean, like, it doesn't get any more far-fetched than that, right? It doesn't. But if that's the case, if it's just completely crazy and insane, why are these types of conversations, like, like these diatribes, like Terrence had, like, where does this come from? You know, why was spirit cooking brought up in a John Podesta email that they were, you know, having a spirit cooking party? This was in a WikiLeak, a real John Podesta email where they were going to have the spirit cooking. And this is, again, this is Aleister Crowley shit. This is straight from the, you know, Satan's belly, man. It's straight from it. You know, what is going on? And what I don't understand is I, I have never done... A hallucinogen. I've never done a psychedelic, and I think I've brought it before. The reason I've never done it is I have an uncle that is doing life. My uncle had a bad trip and in broad daylight killed his mother, my grandma. He did it when he was 18. He beat her head in with a rock in broad daylight. He said he thought the devil was climbing out of her head, and he's doing life. And this story was always terrifying to me as a child. And it just, you know, when you're a kid and something gets engraved in your head, it's just hard to lose that feeling of it. So I've always had this fear of a psychedelic, the idea of seeing something in the world that isn't there and what could happen if it's a, quote, bad trip and you can't get out of it and you're just stuck in that moment. And hearing these stories of people that have taken hallucinogenics and, and, and it just it changes their personality forever and you know all of these things just always sounded terrifying to me and i was like why the fuck would i ever do that you know that doesn't sound like fun to me if i were to do a drug i i want to feel no pain i want to be happy <laughs> you know that's why i would do uh drugs right i mean i don't understand why anybody would do a drug to see shit that isn't there i don't get it um but what's weird is when i grew up and every time I heard about psychedelics, people just talked about it as you take the drugs and then you just kind of go wacky for a while. You go crazy and madness kind of ensues, right? Like you see little elves or colors start melding together and, you know, you start having hallucinations. But no one ever took those hallucinations as anything real. At least I don't remember that. I remember growing up and people talking about going on a trip and coming back. But what's really weird with DMT and it's not just Rogan, but Rogan will talk about it too, where they'll be like, um, you know, when you're on this drug, you know, very real entities come and talk to you. And they, they talk as though you actually enter a real dimension. Not that it's just, a, you know, a chemical that scrambles your brain and you see a bunch of weird shit. They all talk like this is a real place that you're going, which I'm like... How are they building that bridge? You know, how are they, how is Rogan or any of these guys that talk about their DMT trips, how are they coming to a place where they're saying that these entities are real? That it's not just your brain, you know, going haywire, you know? Since when, since when are we accepting hallucinations as reality? And that's what's going on. And that's so bizarre when I listen to these conversations and like Rogan's going, yes, there are entities that approach you and they are geometric patterns that are made of love and understanding. And it's a different dimension that you jump into. And it's like, what? What are you talking about? And granted, I haven't done it and I have no desire to do it. I'll be honest. I'm never going to do it. But, like, you know, it's so weird to hear someone like Rogan, you know, say, well, on one day, if you catch him on a day where he has a guest on that's skeptical, then suddenly he's making fun of aliens and UFOs. And then, you know, he has an episode with David Fravor on, and now he's all in. He believes. You know what I mean? Um, but it's weird to hear Rogan, on one hand, say, yeah, aliens, you know, this is all crazy stuff that people believe this. But in the same goddamn breath, talk about... You know, mechanical elves, like, they're real. You know, like, you take this drug and, 
you just inhale it, man, I'm telling you, you, you lift off and you blast off into a different dimension and you now understand all of it. Now, don't get me wrong. I, I do believe in multiple dimensions. I mean, math supports it. The theory supports it. And I do believe that there is a part of our brain that can probably access these dimensions somehow because we only use a certain percentage of our brain. But again, the, the stories of these trips... If it was all the same place, everybody would be having the same hallucination and going to the same place and experiencing the same thing. And they're not. They're all just experiencing variations of what the brain is doing. But for some reason, now we're taking it, you know, as though this is a real thing. That you take DMT and you, you literally go to a real other dimension. And I think it just seems that way. And when I look at Terrence Howard... This diatribe here that he went on, it was so saddening to me because I just think the guy is a genius. And I think he is just one of the best actors ever. I mean, he is so, so good. And you could tell that he's one of those actors that he really does latch on to. Whatever character he's playing, he finds that very real emotion inside himself. And he gives you that honesty. And I think that's the key to acting is to not act, is to actually uh, find that real emotion of something you care about and call upon that real emotion and deliver it. And I think he does it better than anybody. And when I see him or Jim Carrey like doing this, it's like, what is going on? And it makes me wonder, is this Hollywood conspiracy of these, you know, the ultra elite you know, getting together to have these spiritual journeys to speak to these mechanical elves, you know, is this all really happening? Is it really happening? You know, and the weird thing is, I, I go back to that conversation I had with my agent and, you know, where I was asking about the Illuminati and the power structure in Hollywood and, you know, having been the agent for everybody from, you know, Dave Chappelle to, um, you know, uh, Richard Pryor in his final days and just asking about, is it real? One of the weirdest things about that conversation is right when I asked him, he didn't respond with a yes or no right away. He stopped and he said, huh, why do you want to know? So like before he would give me an answer, he wanted to know my angle, you know, which I was honest with him. I said, no, I have, I, I have no angle beyond I'm just curious as to, you know, is there a power circle at the top that just controls the fate of everybody regardless of what they do? You know, again, as I told you guys before, his answer was, it's real. That this Illuminati power structure is real. And, you know, I, I, I just... I have to wonder what is going on with this DMT thing. I just hear it everywhere. And I'm not even saying for sure that Terrence Howard did this, but look at the similarities between Jim Carrey's diatribe and Terrence Howard's. And they both said the same thing. We're both retiring. We found the meaning of life. We want to teach it to the world. We mean nothing. We're the only, you know, race in the world or species that watches each other. You know, everything we've created is fake, you know. And it's not like there wasn't some genius in what Howard was saying because later on he's interviewed about the the Emmys. And they ask him, um, is he excited because he's getting his star put in the Hollywood, you know, walk of fame. And that's the big thing for people that are working in Hollywood. Getting your star is kind of like one of those milestones and he says, I'm, look, I'm very, you know, honored by it, but I don't understand it. You know, how could I get a star and I've never even been nominated for an Emmy? You know, which is, you know, so he's aware of what's going on. He's, and there's a real genius in that question. I'm going, wait a minute. So I'm getting a star because I'm the best at what I do. But I've never once been nominated for being the best at what I do. <laughs> you know what I mean? So he's there going, how does this happen? I get it, you know. This is crazy, you know, um, but that just that sums up Hollywood, guys. You know, it sums up Hollywood that an actor could get a star in, you know, the Hollywood Walk of Fame for being the best ever 
at what he does in that elite class, but having never been nominated as being the best ever. <laughs> it's complete. It sums up Holly weird. It totally does. Nothing about this fucking industry makes any sense. You just gotta, you just gotta move through it on fate and destination, man. You just gotta have that belief that your fate and your destiny are going to be where they're at and that you're moving towards a good place. And that's, that's it. You just got to stick around, stay around. But I got to also wonder, you know, when you get to that level, what actually occurs? And because it doesn't occur to everybody. I know my managers and partners and agents, like these are really wealthy people. And they have, you know, they've been everywhere. They have all the toys. They have that. And they're totally normal. They're totally cool. They're some of the most compassionate people I've ever known. I'm very lucky to have a team of people like that, that are very supportive and are just loving and caring and believe in me and, you know, are always there, you know, to help me. So I know this isn't a universal thing that goes on at these levels. I know it's not, but it seems to specifically happen to artists. And I'm just, I'm begging the question more than I'm answering it. I'm just wondering what in the fuck is going on where these guys get to this level. And I'm starting to believe that at some level, these types of parties do happen. Believe me, I was blown away to learn that spirit, spirit cooking actually happened. And here's John Podesta. I mean, we're talking about the, at the level of the White House is talking about this satanic event and inviting everybody to get there and saying, this is, this is crazy. This is crazy. So is Alex Jones all that crazy for saying that there are Hollywood elitist parties where people get together and take DMT in which they learn this, you know, mathematical and geometric answer to the universe. And then we're systematically seeing, you know, the actors that are at the top of their trade having the same type of dialogue. Is this going on in Hollywood right now? And if it is, and all those powerful people, you know, are receiving guidance from whatever is in DMTville. How terrifying is that? That these very powerful, influential, wealthy people, you know, are suddenly talking like this. You know, it makes me wonder, like, the Jesse Smollett thing, you know. What when you look at that Jesse Smollett thing or his case, you know, he, here's a guy that's they said he was making over a hundred thousand dollars per episode, which is a nice chunk of coin, and he's the lead of this very successful show. By all, he's young, he's talented, good looking. Like, what would make you go out in Chicago, you know? hire two guys to come fake beat you up, then go to the press. And then when you're obviously caught, just take it all the way. Like the thing is my first thought is dudes on drugs of something. I mean, this is the, whenever someone displays thinking that is so fucking bizarre and makes no sense, it's typically drug induced, you know, it typically is. So it's like, okay, so Terrence Howard's on this weird track and Jesse Smollett just did one of the most bizarre things ever. Uh, like, what is, again, what is going on? What is going on in these circles, you know? You know, ultimately, I don't have to answer this question, but I'm telling you what, man, there is something going on with this DMT push. This whole push for people to take a drug that makes them hallucinate and believe that they physically transform to a different world and see real entities that tell them the answers to the universe, there is a very, very real reason as to why this is being pushed left and right. You know, we grew up in the say no to drugs era. Now, granted, the drug war was a massive failure, but it was a, it was a, you know, a, a financial disaster. And it was also complete bullshit because, you know, our government just wanted all the, the drug money for themselves. But we grew up in a time where socially, it was the same no to drugs ever, right? And that's a good message. This is your brain. This is your brain on drugs, right? 
Now, it's a good message simply because, not that I, listen, I've already said before, I'm for the legal, legalization of all drugs, period, just because I believe in a human's, you know, our, our, I believe in freedom. I believe in the right to choose. And it's going to happen anyways, so make it safe for people, as safe as you can. You know, the argument that, oh, well, if you just made drugs legal, everybody would be doing it. Everybody's doing it anyways. Everybody's doing it anyways, so make it safe. But having said that, my overall message to people would be, your best life doesn't include drugs. That's the truth. If you can be at optimum health and have a clean, you know, mind that is, you know, working properly, like that's your best life. So my, my overall message would be don't do drugs. You know, you don't need it to be happy. You really don't. You know, and that's a positive message. But what's weird today is some of our biggest celebrities in the world, whether it be, you know, Rogan or you know, however many, you know, rappers there are or artists and actors. I mean, it's like they're actively promoting the use of like heavy drugs. Like it's nothing. It, isn't that weird? Anybody? I'm not even, forget wrong or right. Isn't it weird? Isn't it weird that our Johnny Carson of today, which is Joe Rogan, isn't it weird that he's just openly promoting the use of hallucinogenics and psychedelics. <laughs> it's just weird. <clears throat> just weird to me. I don't know. Maybe I'm crazy. Maybe it isn't as weird to all of you guys. It's just weird to me. And he's not the only one. I mean, this is, this is going on right now throughout the industry. And when I see, when I see guys like Terrence Howard going on a diatribe like this, while I think the man is genius, this doesn't this doesn't smell of genius. To me, this smells of insanity. It smells of a trip. And whatever he is feeling and thinking right now, he is not explaining it in a way that makes sense to anybody. And I sincerely hope that uh, you know whatever's going on with him, I hope that he figures it out because he is a genius talent. And somebody that does deserve to have a star. And somebody who, uh, you know, has definitely given me many hours of enjoyment, man. And I've always uh, followed his work as an activist and a philanthropist. And he's heavily involved in a ton of positive, positive movements. And, uh, you know, I hope, I hope he gets it together, man. Because whatever's going on right now, I am not down with it. I am not down with the scrambling. I mean, anybody's mind, man. And uh, I just, we haven't heard the last of the story. We haven't. More is coming from this man, from Jim Carrey, Rogan, this DMT thing, all this movement. We haven't heard the last of this. And there is going to be a reason. There's going to be a reason that we uncovered down the road that this was pushed so hard. There's definitely going to be a reason. Having said that, guys, thank you all for listening to episode number 85 of the In a Crowded Room podcast. I hope you enjoyed it. I will be back tomorrow with more. All the best.